Hey everybody, this is Chris from Katana, and in this video we're going to talk all about batch tracking. Batch tracking, or lot tracking, allows you to track batch production from raw materials to manufacturing and from finished goods to sale. Batch tracking is a tool that enables manufacturing companies full end-to-end -end traceability for any finished goods that they sell out into the marketplace. It's commonly used in highly regulated industries such as food and beverage, pharmaceuticals, healthcare products and cosmetics, or in industries where quality assurance is very important such as electronics, automotive, or even medical device manufacturing. In the event that a customer will have a problem with a product that was sold to them, certain types of things can happen, such as a product recall, or an investigation, or even a warranty claim. Full end-to-end -end traceability will give you the visibility that you need to know exactly where your finished good came from by tracking it down to what manufacturing order made it, as well as for its raw material components, what supplier supplied them, and when. So in this video, what I'm gonna show you is how to use Katana's full end-to-end -end traceability from the purchase of a raw material all the way to the time you sell it as a finished good. In our example, we have a Katana account representing a chocolate bar manufacturer. This company makes what we call chocolate yum bars that come in an almond nougat as well as hazelnut glaze flavor. And this business makes these chocolate bars uh, out of materials that are consumable, such as almond itself, cocoa butter, dark chocolate, and milk chocolate. And as a result, because it's in the food and beverage industry, it's required that they track all of their raw materials as well as their finished goods with batch numbers. So to get started with this example, what we need to do is go ahead and activate our batch tracking for our different products and materials. Firstly, on any item card, which would be when you go to click inside of, let's say in this case, milk chocolate, you will see that there is an option that says, I track batches or lot numbers. To activate batch tracking, you simply would just turn that on. In the case of materials, which we've just activated for milk chocolate, it enables us to assign batch numbers anytime we create a purchase order and receive that material into our inventory. In the case of products, such as our chocolate yum bars, when that is turned on, it enables us to assign a batch number to any product that we manufacture. Now that we've activated our products and materials with batch traceability, then the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is buy some materials that are batch trackable. So firstly, we'll head into our stock page and on our stock page where we have our materials list, we've got a few items that are currently missing from stock that we need to go ahead and purchase in. So once we select the buy option, we can generate a PO for all of the items that are missing from inventory for this particular supplier and create and open this purchase order. Once the PO is consolidated and we start to mark our items as received, then it will come up and allow us to assign batch numbers for the raw materials that we had just received. So in this case, we have some almond nougat. And if we take a look here and we assign the batch number, it will pre-populate some information about other batches that have this specific item inside of it. In our case, we're going to go ahead and assign a new batch number for these items. And what we'll go ahead and do this, since it is the 22nd of January, we'll give these a batch number of 0 0-22. And we'll go ahead and create that new batch number here. You can also assign expiration dates for any incoming materials. And simply go in here, let's say maybe these items have a two or three week shelf life. So we'll do a Friday, three weeks out, 12th of February. And the same with this raw chocolate as well. We've got some batch numbers 01-20, 01-21. In this one, we'll do 01-22 as well. And we'll give it the same expiration date. 12th of February. Okay, once you've done that, you can go ahead and receive those items in. And those items have now been captured on your purchase order and added to your batches inventory. When you head back into the stock page after your items have been received, you'll see an option here called batches. Now on this page, you have a full list of all of your products that are in batches, as well as all of your materials that have been assigned to batches with their corresponding stock quantities as well as their expiration dates. The dates on the expiration side are actually organized with the most recent coming due, so you can keep a close eye on all of the batches that are expiring first. This is also ideal, especially from the materials perspective, to consume all of the materials first that are going to be used in your manufacturing process. Now that we've marked a few items as received and assigned batch numbers to those materials, the next step in this process to complete traceability would be to assign 
batches to manufacturing orders, as well as identify from what batches those materials came in to make those manufacturing orders. So we'll head over to our manufacturing schedule on the make page. And here we've got one manufacturing order here at the bottom called manufacturing order number three. Now inside of this manufacturing order, we're making a wholesale pack of 20 units of the two ounce singles for chocolate yum bars in the hazelnut glaze favor. Sounds pretty good. To make this batch of products, we need to use these materials down below, which are also batch trackable. Now for manufacturing, you can assign a batch number to a manufacturing order anytime before the manufacturing order is completed. To take a quick look at how to do so, you'll see this pencil icon on the manufacturing order where you can go in and assign the batch number. I've already assigned this as W3-01, indicating that this manufacturing process occurred in work week number three, and it was the first one I did during that week. So we'll go ahead and hit confirm here and keep it as such. For these two 20 packs that we're making, once we complete this manufacturing order, at the time we mark the manufacturing order as done, this is the moment in where we need to assign all of the ingredient batches that were consumed in this manufacturing order. To do so, you'll select the done button, and you'll get a prompt with every single batch trackable raw material ingredient. As you can see, we've got five ingredients that make this product and only three of them are batch trackable. What we'll take from our stock is from certain batch numbers of the items that we're consuming to make this product. So firstly, the raw chocolate. As you can see, I've got three batches of raw chocolate in this list. Now what's interesting about this is you have the freedom to decide which batches you wanna use, but Katana has designed it so that you can see the ones expiring first. So we will go ahead and use um, the one kilogram that we have in stock of this one expiring on the 29th of January. And as you can see, it's not quite enough, so we'll have to use some extra ingredients from another batch. We'll go ahead and pull from our 1-21 batch here. So we're good to go with that one. And then when we have to assign the hazelnut glaze, we can get that from 1-20. There's still a little bit left that we have to consume, so we'll take some from 1-21. And when it comes to the cocoa butter batch, same as well, we'll pull from 1-20. And you can see all of the expiration dates related to those particular ingredients. And uh, these would be the ones that we would logically want to consume first, since they're perishable items. So once you select confirm, it will complete the manufacturing order for you, do the allocation, and then all of that information will be captured on the manufacturing order itself. With tracking information for our raw ingredients as well as our finished product, we have established traceability between our raw material as well as finished good layer. To finalize end-to-end -end traceability, we need to associate batch numbers for any sales orders that we fulfill from our sales order list. So heading into our sales order list on the sell screen, we have one sales order, sales order two, with all of the sales items in stock. So we'll go ahead and fulfill this by opening it up and see what it is that we have to send out. Presently, these are chocolate yum bars with the wholesale pack, which we just manufactured. And when we send this order out by marking it as delivered, it will prompt you to specify from which batch in your finished goods inventory you're going to fulfill the sales order from. We presently have three pieces we have to send out. And if we specify from which batches we will take from, we currently have two batches of this item. One batch is expiring on the 29th of January and the second one is expiring on the 5th of February. So let's take our oldest first and allocate one piece. And then from our second batch, W3-01, we'll go ahead and remove the remaining two. When you hit confirm, this will deduct those items from inventory, add the information into the sales order, as well as reduce the batches from which they are sent from. If you ever need to look up historical information concerning your batches for either products or materials, inside of your stock page, you can select any product or material in stock value to see historical stock movements. If it's a batch trackable item, you can see exactly which batch movement was also affected as a result of that stock movement. In our case, you can see here that this item had been fulfilled by two sales orders and was created from this manufacturing order or added by the stock adjustment. You can also look up specific batches to identify any movements that occurred as a result of those, either when it was made or either when it was removed from inventory. Well, that about sums it up for our batch tracking and end-to-end traceability video. We hope that you found this video useful. 
Feel free to leave us a message down below in the comments telling us how you think Katana could benefit your business and your batch tracking needs. If you have any additional questions concerning this workflow, you're welcome to check out our website and knowledge base articles or shoot us a message at support at katanamrp.com. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more awesome content from Katana Smart Manufacturing. That's it from me. Have a great day and happy manufacturing.